Hong Kong, fast-paced, vibrant, dynamic, and Asia's world city. With a population of over 7 million people living in an area of just 1,100 square kilometers, safe, reliable urban transportation is the key to keeping the city on the move. The MTR operates 19 hours a day, carrying an average of 5.4 million passenger trips and is regarded as one of the world's safest, most reliable, customer-oriented and cost-efficient metro systems. Continual expansion of the network is required to keep pace with the city's expanding demographics. However, building an underground railway in one of the most densely populated cities in the world requires extraordinary planning and execution. The South Island Line will open up the southern district to the benefits that the MTR brings, reducing travelling times to the busy northern shores to less than 12 minutes. Admiralty is one of Hong Kong's busiest interchange stations, serving the Island Line and Chun Wan Line. Constructing the new station beneath the existing one is a feat of engineering. The new part of the station is sandwiched by the existing Admiralty Station finger platforms and concourses and a busy underground car park. I'm Mike Bizzano, MTR Construction Manager for Contract 901, responsible for the expansion of the Admiralty Station. One of the most challenging parts of this highly complex civil engineering contract is the underpinning works for the Island Line Platform Tunnel. The safety of the railway has always been our top priority and has been our first consideration during the design, planning and implementation of the works. The detailed design for the underpinning was developed over a two-year period and involved extensive consultation and approvals with many internal and external stakeholders, including multiple presentations to an international expert review panel. Redundancy was built into all our temporary supports, jacks, jacking system, monitoring systems and rock support to cater for support event failure without affecting the railway operation. Fast forward to December 2013 and the start of the underpinning works. The railway and support structures have undergone constant monitoring with multiple real-time monitoring systems employed. Daily review meetings and weekly opportunity meetings have taken place to monitor the works and review the works implementation and plan for future design opportunity. Following the virtual plan to the letter, the first series of slots, shown here as slots A, were cut into the rock face, after which the progressive introduction of temporary works beams and columns to support the island line finger platform were placed. Then, supported by jacks, the load was transferred to the columns in the slot, allowing the B slots to be excavated. With the rock immediately under the finger platform removed, the remainder of the composite transfer platform was installed. It was at this stage that the first modification to the underpinning sequence was implemented. It was apparent that the geology encountered was different from that assumed in the design, and as a result, the extraction was taking more time to complete. The rock condition meant that the team were able to excavate deeper slots, increasing the slot depth from 4.5 meters to 6.75 meters. The next formation level was then set to minus 28.35, and with the installation of the columns in the completed slots, this allowed the loads to be transferred to the underpinning structure, bearing on the unexcavated rock. As with the planned excavation sequence, the adjoining excavated rock was removed to the next formation level. Whilst this allowed the excavation to continue to a lower level, the width of the slots meant that the team could not make use of larger capacity machinery. The answer was to re-engineer the underpinning transfer structure to permit wider or double slots to be used. This allowed the JV to use larger plant which increased the rate of rock excavation and combined with the fact that they could continue down to the ultimate formation level brought significant time savings on this critical piece of work. The built-in redundancy to the underpinning system created an opportunity for the successful development and implementation of a number of design changes leading to significant program improvement. The implementation of these changes required the same level of scrutiny and approval as the original design and required significant pre-planning and support from all parties in the construction and the design teams. Using the larger machinery, 
the extraction of rock from the A slots progressed at a much higher rate than was previously achieved. Once formation level was attained, the temporary and permanent foundations were cast and the steel columns installed. Then carefully controlled load transfer to the newly installed structure using the high level main jacks was done, which allowed the secondary jacks to retract the now unloaded temporary columns, leaving the permanent columns in place. The rock piers which supported the structure during the extraction of the double slots can now be systematically and safely removed. With the piers now removed and all rock excavation down to the final formation level completed, the remaining permanent foundations and supporting columns in the underpinning zone can now be installed and the loads transferred from all temporary works to the permanent structure. Great care has been taken with the controls implemented on site by all the supervision teams. And all of this work has been carefully and safely undertaken with no effect to the operating railway. The success of these highly complex underpinning works has only been achieved through a fully integrated and partnering approach between the MTR Corporation, their detailed design consultants, Arup, the Keir Lango Rock Caden Joint Venture, their designers, Benaim and Oricon, and the specialist heavy lifting contractor, VSL, all working together as one team. My name's Seb Fossey, I work for Langer Raw and I'm the project leader for the station box and underpinning work on Project 901. So I'm standing 45 metres below ground and behind me is the underpinning, the deepest point of which is about 49 metres below ground. If you follow the columns up behind me to where you interface with the existing structure, then you can see the jacking gallery above which we've got the jacks which control uh, all the movement on the existing structure and make sure that it stays in its design position. Watching the story unfold on video does not give the viewer an indication of the scale of the operation. The cavernous volume of rock excavation would be enough to house a jumbo jet. The volume of concrete would fill a two-story soccer pitch. And just the weight of the steel rebar alone equates to over 30 star ferries, all confined to a site footprint about the same size of Wimbledon Centre Court. Thanks to the professionalism of the contract team and the great care they've exercised, these complex works paving the way for Admiralty Station's transformation into a mega interchange station. <laughs>